So thank you. Um, and I want to make sure I'm pronouncing this right, because I'm really bad with pronunciations, especially outside of English. Um, is the first name Anar? Is that how you pronounce the first name? You can, like, I usually never say it in the Norwegian way when I speak English, but in English, I usually say Einar. Einar, uh, okay. But in Norwegian, it's Einar. In Norwegian, oh, okay. it's Einar. Wonderful. I'm not going to attempt so, that because uh, I don't want but, to uh, it or doesn't <laughs> doesn't work very well mm -hmm. when speaking English. You kind of have to stop and say the name and then continue. It doesn't have a, so I usually yeah. just say Einar. Einar is all the all the different but phonemes. In Norwegian is Einar Stolberg. Oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for letting me know. And thank you for taking some time out of your day and having a little chat about your upcoming uh, solo album. That's my pleasure. Yeah. So I've got I've got a couple of questions uh, and we'll just kind of keep the conversation fun and light um, All right. because this this is your first solo record. Uh, I always like mm -hmm. to ask um, artists who have like established bands or whatnot. Um, kind of like what sparked your interest in doing a solo album and why why do it now? So I wasn't planning on doing it now, but I'll get back to that. Uh, I it was going to be earlier, but I'll come back to that. Uh, so what sparked it to begin with was I, I felt like everyone else around me has other things, mm -hmm. other projects, other things they do in life. With me, it was Slippers. That was it. Uh, and not that I complain about that. It's a very cool band to work with. But mm -hmm. you don't want to eat the same dish every day, even though it's good. You know, uh, even mm -hmm. though it's your favorite dish, you still want to try something else here and there. And and I I felt at some point after we'd done like it was 2018, we'd done like more than 100 shows with Lepros that year plus mm -hmm. travel days. Uh, and and I felt, and then I saw that, oh, my schedule is completely empty for oh. like three months now. I need to find something to do in between. And I need to find something that I really love doing in between. Uh, and then I decided, okay, I want to do this project that, that is going to be kind of under my name, but where I work with the other compo one other composer for each song. And that was the original plan from the album, for the mm -hmm. album to just get to learn from and work with new people uh, that has their own strong musical identity. Um, but, um, and, and so it ended up with seven out of 11 songs being like that. And then I, some of them, I just wrote for myself because okay. I just, yeah, they were, I wrote the sketch and then I was, ah, kind of happy with where this is at at the moment. So I don't really need to force the, it and mm -hmm. send it to someone else just because that was the original plan but but uh so so that was the so it's not like it it's not like really a like proper solo record even though it's under my name uh it's it's a lot of collaborations there and and composition collaborations so that's that was and i loved every part of the process it was a lot of fun to to do it and great to both for myself and I think also for Leprous to to find something on the side so that it gets really exciting to go back and also work with Leprous again in the periods mm -hmm. where I've been working more with the other project. So it's basically how it is. You're just uh, variation and expanding the horizon, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've noticed that with a lot of um, artists who have like a predominant band who go and do a solo record, they come back with that experience and kind of tighten up the band uh in general um, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's and, and i i want it to be two two quite different things and and you can hear it a bit on the record that it's kind of different but you when seeing it live that's when you will properly experience that these two projects are pretty different mm -hmm. uh so i i just realized that with the two shows that we did now it's not like i know solberg and then uh people in the background playing the right notes it's strong musical personalities that i bring mm -hmm. with me on stage that take a lot of space and really adds to the show you know uh, mm -hmm. and that's how i wanted it to be i wanted it to be people who has something to say musically mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. on stage and um so it's that's why i feel it differs a bit from some other solo projects it's that it's i feel it's it's very open and it's very open mm -hmm. for people to kind of take a bit of space in it and, and do their thing. 
so it's not only about me basically um and uh, and and that feels uh, feels very cool to be working with people in that in that way yeah yeah, and there's some really, really fascinating features and collaborations that you have on this record. Was there one in particular that you enjoyed the most working with? I enjoy, I enjoyed a lot of them, but I think what I've said from the beginning, maybe the one that I'm most proud of is the last one, uh, The mm -hmm. Glass is Empty, uh, that I did together with Toti. Uh, uh, Toti, I, I wanted to work with uh, for a long time. He's a fantastic composer, uh, a great guy, is a good friend of mine, and and we are, in a way, in our preferences, we're not too far from each other. Uh, mm -hmm. But in our approaches to how we work, we're very different. Mm. Uh, he has a more methodi methodical uh, approach to it, whereas I have a more intuitive and chaotic approach to, to writing. And I'm a very fast writer, and he likes to take mm. his time and just go through things properly. And so, uh, but it, it worked really, really super smooth uh be between us and and i thought that was was very interesting and i think it was one that was great to just write with no egos everybody could just uh, uh like I, I like i could just relax and i didn't like have to like push myself oh i want to be on top of this and i'm used to be on top of this just like yeah do whatever you want with this. There is no pressure on this, on this album. It just we're just gonna have fun until it sounds good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that was the attitude uh, of the album. It was very ambitious and very expensive uh, in the end because I didn't, <laughs> I don't really do compromise uh, very well. Right. Uh, so if I make a choir part, then I hire a classical choir uh, to do it. <laughs> to be uh, and yeah. that's just how it is. And so for me, it, it's probably going to be a big minus project for a long while. But it's, uh, um, it's musical passion, and that's kind <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, of always put a price tag on that. Yeah, and you can hear all the production on this as well. So like that has gone the extra step because uh, in my ears, you can always hear when some artist has kind of shortcutted it or yeah, 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 synth yeah. when they shouldn't have. So yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There is can... there is nothing mm -hmm. like that. There is uh, whenever there is piano, it's a uh, grand piano or upright piano, regard mm -hmm. like 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 um. So and then uh, whenever there is a road, there is a real road. When there is a string, mm -hmm. string, strings, there is real strings. Same with the with the choir, mm -hmm. um, brass is real brass, uh, mm -hmm. French horn, trombone, saxophone, and trumpet. Mm -hmm. uh, a church organ, proper mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything there is, and of course, like I could have gotten away with doing a way less ambitious album that would have sounded pretty similar and probably gotten approximately the same feedback. But right. To me, it's so important to know that oh, I could have done this thing and it would have been cooler, and then. Mm -hmm. Of course, everything has its limits. So uh, there is a budget limit somewhere there, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. I think um, it was definitely either the most expensive or one out of two most expensive records uh, I've done just because of the... We're not together with a band, so I had to hire mm -hmm. every single person to, to do right. the album. And... Um, uh, and and it was not like it was uh, extravagant in any way or like, oh, I just want to spend a lot of money for the sake of spending money. I think that st stuff is ridiculous, you know, like mm -hmm. you can make an album that is super cheap and sounds amazing. But it was just the nature of the music that required, mm -hmm. OK, I, I really need this instrument here and yeah. those players cost money. And that's just mm -hmm. how it works. And it's... Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's the type yeah. of sound that you're going for, right? So if you yeah, want that yeah, 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 yeah. pure sound, you want to get that pure instrument on it. So. Yeah, so that's how I write in general. I, I, I don't think what I want in terms of orchestration and instrumentation in advance. I just write music and then I see afterwards, okay, what do I need for this? Mm -hmm. uh, with Lepers, it's a bit more based around the lineup that we have. Um, um, but even there, we kind of just 
sometimes hires people that we don't have in the van. Mm -hmm. So, but um, yeah. So so that's that was the so the process for me was very very cool and very exciting and a bit frightening at times because uh, suddenly you're even though I had a lot of people that I worked with, I was the one responsible for everything. I didn't have anyone to share the responsibility with like I had right. uh, in Leprous always. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess speaking to that, because this is the first, um, at, at least what, I, what I'm hearing where you're going much further outside of the kind of like Leprous sound, uh, the sound mm -hmm. that has been cultivated and changed and... Um, you know, really honed in, especially on the last three albums or so. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I really like some of these changes of sounds. And I think part of that might be the uh, musicians that you've brought in, like yeah. bringing mm -hmm. in, um, uh, oh, I'm going to miss up, miss his name, uh, Ben Levin from Bent Knee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where there's mm -hmm. almost like this hip hop approach to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, was there a, approach, yeah. yeah, so was there a, a, um excitement jump into that or was it more of a hesitancy i'm gonna let ben no 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 i'm I'm, it. I'm not very cautious in my approach ever okay. uh, and yeah. and i don't have caution in in in, in my approach uh, <laughs> when it comes to life choices in general <laughs> and 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 uh ben for me was like obvious choice because he mm -hmm. is an amazing uh, uh musician and, and composer and, and artist in general but he's so extremely different than me right. he's kind of more down to earth and more like kind of goofy in his uh <laughs> in his approach mm -hmm. uh so i thought that would be a great uh melting pot uh, and mm -hmm. I, I i love that song and and ben actually now plays uh, in my live band uh, as well yeah. yeah so uh and he's such a resource you know like he goes all in and and mm -hmm. learns everything like uh exactly kind of how it should be and but then afterwards kind of making it into his own uh mm -hmm. so uh it, it it's such a such a great guy to and i love to work with people who are not the typical session people who just come and mm -hmm. play the right note and right. and they leave again and they send the invoice you know i yeah. i want to <laughs> yeah. i want to work with people who have some passion in what they're doing in their own way mm -hmm. and and that's what i what i said before is that i wanted to work with people who are a bit more down to earth in their approach than me to kind of compensate for my drama a bit <laughs> uh, so to and i think that works out really well live especially now that we play these shows together and mm -hmm. and it's it's a much more relaxed approach than than what you'd see with the uh, with lepers mm -hmm. Yeah, you've mentioned this a couple of times in terms of playing live. Is there mm -hmm. a official tour, or is it just gigs no, we whenever did, you can? We did we did two shows, uh, festival shows now, uh, Prognosis in Netherlands festival, Prog festival, and then uh, Prognosis in London. Uh, okay. So that was the, I, I wasn't planning to do any live shows at this stage, but then um, uh, one of the um, I think is partly owner of, of the festival uh mm -hmm. who is also um happens to be my publisher and uh, and um and also owns the booking agency that we mm -hmm. he asked just like hey do you want to you want to play this year uh, because <laughs> he had heard the album and and i was just like uh well it's kind of before the album is out even mm -hmm. and I don't know, uh, like, yeah, and then, uh, okay, I just went for it, and mm -hmm. I'm really glad that I did, because I was able to put together, like, a great bunch of musicians, and it was super inspiring for me to play with, with those musicians, and it's such a different vibe than Leprous Live, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. which was super exciting for me, uh, playing in the same band mm -hmm. my whole life, and then coming there and doing just something else, uh, mm -hmm. that was, yeah, it was very exciting. Amazing. Is there any future shows planned, or uh, is it if it comes yeah, up? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm sure there will be. Um, it's an expensive band to put together for a tour mm -hmm. because it's uh, top-notch musicians that lives 
all over. You know, they have two people from from Boston, from the states. Yeah. Uh, one from Iceland or two from Iceland, but one from Iceland who lives in Iceland, one from from and one from Iceland that lives in Copenhagen, and there is also a couple from Norway. So we're spread out, like really yeah. spread out, uh, and and it's so it would take a certain amount of economy for us to go on tour, but we're very eager to do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. So I think it depends a bit on how well the album goes, if it's Mm -hmm. well received and if there is an interest and request, uh, we will definitely go out. We have one more show book that is actually on the same festival as uh, uh leprous uh but it hasn't been announced yet but it will be announced in a few days but Mm -hmm. so leprous is playing uh the day before and then i play the day after uh with Mm -hmm. my project so it's gonna be interesting and so yes i will for now it's one-off shows uh Mm -hmm. i'm not gonna do i'm not gonna go around go grinding uh, tiny clubs again Uh, um and build this from scratch uh, uh-huh. and i don't think i would have to in the same way of course because it's it's at least somewhat established name but uh-huh. but um it's not gonna start straight on the same level as leprous that's for sure right and, yeah and so that's why i want to keep it more exclusive and like instead of doing a four week tour i could maybe do like a one week tour uh-huh. uh with stuff that makes sense yeah yeah that makes with sense and weird, weird. yeah mm-hmm. we tour a lot with lepers as well so yeah and it's it's one of the good slash bad things about a lot of us prog bands where we have all these individuals from around the world to help collaborate and mm-hmm. make amazing music but getting everybody mm-hmm. together in one spot is always very challenging mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah 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 so you definitely course, rely on so i could festivals. have made it yeah, yeah, yeah. I could have made it easier for myself, of course, and and put together a Norwegian band with really good musicians. But I just like I don't regret for a second bringing the musicians that I brought because it made it a lot more special than it would have done just yeah. choosing some good session musicians because these are musicians that all has their own career, which is also why it's a bit would be a bit hard to gather everyone for a mm-hmm. long tour because everyone has their own agendas mm-hmm. and lives no, you know, so it's, sure. uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Um, last question because i'm aware of the time uh and this might be a very difficult question for you to answer but what track on this album are you most proud of in terms of uh, i guess i'll let you define your your proudness but mm-hmm. yeah i'm always i think maybe i already answered it uh, with the glass is okay. empty the last track uh yeah. Uh, I'm not sure it was exactly the words that I put on it, but it, it is the one that I'm most proud of. Uh, mm-hmm. because, uh, and it's a kind of interesting track because me and Toti were both seen as artists from the prog scene, mm-hmm. but none of us are really that into prog, and <laughs> we had mm-hmm. no plans in making a prog track, right? But it still ended up being the longest and maybe <laughs> most complicated uh, song mm-hmm. of the album. And it just ended up like that. And to me, that one is what I'm proud of that's, with that song is that it's, I feel it's very emotionally deep. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not uh, a song that you listen to one time and, and oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. That it? Yeah. Uh, but we, we, we played it live too, and, and I felt it's a song that made an impact on people that were listening. Uh, and so from the from the beginning, uh, when that song was written, that was instantly the one that I was most proud of from a compositional point of view. Uh, it's not a hit song. It's not going to be the most played song on, on uh, streaming platforms, but it's uh, the one that I think I'm the most proud of. That's amazing. Yeah, it's it's a mm. definitely a standout for me. There's a number of tracks on here that I can't wait to go back and listen to again and again. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah, so yeah, thank you so much for coming on and having a chat about your new record. Um for thank you. those of for those of you that are interested, it's uh, I believe it's being released on June 2nd, so I think we have almost a, a more than a full month of anticipation. So, yes. you know, get those, get those uh, um, fingers ready to pre-order. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. So thanks for coming on and having a chat. 
thank you so much and have a great day take you care you too take care thanks take care bye bye, bye, -bye.